Hello, everybody. Good evening. Uh, Connor Armstrong here from Alliance. Uh, I'm joined by my colleague, John. Uh, we're here to talk about Manchester uh, as a, a property market, as a potential investment, um, and really just give, give a bit of an insight. Um, just quick background on myself. So I'm the director, head of Middle East and Africa. I've been with Alliance for coming up to a decade now and worked for the company in numerous markets, um, UK, Middle East, and in Hong Kong as well. Uh, John has a, a background in finance uh, and has, in the last few years, moved across to property uh, and helps our clients predominantly from the Middle East and Africa as well. Now, we seem to be having more, more and more conversations, but particularly with international investors who are starting to cotton on that Manchester should be, if it's not already, a, a real market of interest. Um, historically, everybody would focus on London, um, but now we're starting to understand that there's much greater potential for returns, return on investment, uh, if we look at the regional cities, um, but Manchester's really spearheading that. So, yeah, we'll, we'll go for a few points. We won't keep you too long. We know everybody's uh, very busy. Um, and yeah, at the end, if you have any questions, feel free to, to contact us directly. We can book in a follow-up meeting or calls or, or whatever it might be. So quick overview on Alliance. Um, our parent company is Property Alliance Group, uh, who are a 35-year-old property developer headquartered from Manchester. Um, they build residential, commercial, uh, industrial, so uh, across all sectors and have a portfolio worth over £300 million. Pounds. Now, where Alliance Investments, our company, fits into it, we're the direct sales and marketing arm of Alliance, um, but we also work with other developers um, who you know, we, we, we identify opportunities in different markets, different price points, different cities. Uh, but what's quite nice is that we do uh, stringent and deep dive due diligence on behalf of our clients before taking on these developments. We have offices kind of across the globe so we can service our clients in all different time zones, locations. So we have a headquarter in Manchester, an office in London, uh, Shanghai and Hong Kong. Uh, and then we're uh, coming to you out of our D Dubai office this evening. Um, here's a few of our development partners um, who you may know some of them, they're, they're all household names across the UK who we're either currently working with or, or have worked with in the past. Now, one of the reasons we are the investment firm of choice uh, for a lot of our international investors is uh, we provide the full turnkey solution. Uh, so in simple terms, from the initial investment consultation, when uh, obviously one of our sales representatives discusses with the client what they're looking to achieve, all the way through to mortgages, completions, and thereafter the uh, leasing and management uh, of the property. Uh, so a lot of international investors are always on the lookout for something that's hands off. They're obviously not in the UK, and uh, obviously the services that we provide tick a lot of those boxes because it's very hands off and we provide a full turnkey solution. And we'll just have a, a quick look at kind of some of our completed uh, and ongoing developments in Manchester. Uh, and we will go on to um, locations within the city in, in a little bit more detail as we go on through the presentation. Um, but this will give you kind of an indication that we have a, a variant of projects, a variant of options that we've delivered. Uh, and for us, we're always looking to provide different solutions for different needs for different investors. So whether that's super prime location that comes at a slight premium on price, whether that's an area that has been earmarked for future potential growth, et cetera. Here's just a, a small example of some of our completed projects in Manchester. Now, you, you'll note that they're all very, very different in terms of design, which again is important because whilst if you're an investor, you know, it's, it's important to focus mainly on the numbers and the return on investment, but but also you've got to have a good feeling and like the building, whether that's the interiors, the amenities or, or the designs as well. Now, um, in terms of oxygen, this is one of our flagship uh, developments in the city centre of Manchester. 
Uh, we completed it in 2021, um, completely sold out, fully tenanted, and it's won numerous awards uh, over the recent years um, in terms of uh, development and as well as uh, the residents living uh, in, in, in the building. So it's won many uh, awards with regards to the development itself and uh, in terms of the, 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 the people living in the building, a lot of them have been very happy and satisfied. And in terms of surveys, uh, you know, it ticks all the boxes. And um, this is one of them. In terms of 2017, when we launched it, uh, we initially had one bed at £170,000, uh, two beds at £225,000. Upon completion in 2021, um, house prices for the one bed was £265,000 giving our investors a 55% increase with regards to the two beds that were going for £340,000, uh, which is a 51% increase. Now, in terms of the rental prices in 2021, when we completed it, our one beds were renting out for about £1,100. Um, and in today's market, they're renting for about £1,400. It's about a 27% increase. The two beds, very similar, £1,400. When we launched it in 2021, in today's market, they're, they're renting from 1,900, some on higher floors, over 2,000 uh, pounds, giving our investors, um, you know, uh, about 35% increase upwards. Well, we'll touch on now kind of probably why why you're joining us uh, and why you, you've logged in is, is more about Manchester. So it's a market that is grossly undersupplied. Um, there, there are just too many people moving to the city. Um, there's a, a nice stat here that 28,000 new jobs are being created in Manchester by the end of 2024 alone. And we just keep seeing this constant strain on the housing market, which is pushing rentals, it's pushing property prices up. And it's very simple supply and demand metrics. If there are too many people and not enough properties, prices go up, right? And last year alone, there was a record 1.7 million square foot of office space. Uh, and I think that just highlights the, the point that there are ample opportunities. There are companies moving people to Manchester, expanding into Manchester. There are a number of blue chip companies in, in the city as well. Uh, and this kind of subsides with rents increasing by 19% in the last 12 months alone. The year before, they increased 20%. Um, and with the current rate of construction, we're going to have a, a home shortage of 50,000 by 2025. In terms of uh, economic growth, uh, Manchester is one of Europe's fastest growing tech cities and uh, it represents the largest regional economy outside of London. Now, with Manchester's world-class universities, along with uh, extensive infrastructure, construction, as well as the regeneration in the city, um, a lot of international buyers have been attracted by this uh, international enterprises. And this has all resulted in the demand uh, for the residential properties increasing within the city itself, making Manchester a buy-to-rent hotspot and it's set to have the highest rental growth of any city in the UK over the next five years. Now, Manchester's economic growth is set to be higher than all the other major UK cities over the next five years. And uh, the graph on the right indicates that uh, in comparison to a number of other big six cities in the UK. I think just, just to expand on John, John's point here. So we, we have what's coined as the big six, which is the major cities outside of London. So Birmingham, Bristol, Edinburgh, Glasgow, Leeds and Manchester. Um, and in all honesty, you'll probably do very well if you were to buy in any of these cities right now. I think we have to kind of have a, a footnote here that although Manchester is not the largest city, the economy is booming. And again, it's one, one of the fastest growing cities in Europe. And it, it almost has the feel of London 10, 15 years ago. And don't get me wrong, no city can ever compare to London because of its scale and what it gives. But it, it has placed itself, Manchester, as the UK's second city. Um, Again, just touching on kind of the, the growth in the tech sector, which, which is huge over in Media City, but we have already 80% of the FTSE 100, uh, maybe more now have a presence in Manchester, the BBC headquarters, ITV, 
Warner Brothers, um, companies like JP Morgan now are, are taking office space there. Uh, and it's an important point, point to note is that companies are now realizing it's so much cheaper for them, it are approximately £15,000 per desk cheaper per employee to have staff members in Manchester. Uh, and this also ties in with the, the quality of their living experience, because whilst Manchester is getting more and more expensive, if you compare it to what kind of quality of life they get in London, where it is just crazy expensive, um, it, it just makes a lot of sense for A, the employee and also the employer. Um, there are numerous regeneration schemes. And again, we'll, we'll just highlight a couple further down the, down the slide, but, but there's a lot of external and international investment coming into Manchester and it's seeing a, a real property boom. Now, here's uh, an interesting stat. So the population growth is double the national average uh, across the UK. Uh, and I did touch on this point, but we're going to have a shortfall of 50,000 homes. Probably the key stat, which, which I kind of like to highlight, is there's a 50% graduate retention rate. Now, there are 120,000 students in Manchester across three major universities. And every year, 32,000 graduates are staying in Manchester. Whereas when I graduated you know, many moons ago now, but everyone went to London because that's where all the opportunity was. Whereas we've now got these young people staying not only for job opportunities, but also for the, the lifestyle that they get in Manchester. And as a landlord or a potential landlord, these are thousands and thousands of people every year who are entering the, the market as renters because young people can't afford to buy homes, but they're also not willing to sacrifice their life and go back and live with mum and dad and miss out on a good time during their 20s. So you just have this constant conveyor belt of, of new young people moving into the city. Um, in terms of kind of historical price growth, Manchester has been one of the strongest performing cities for house price growth for a number of years now. Uh, and this is confirmed by you know, a number of indices. Um, and uh, actually, what's quite interesting is in the last year, Manchester increased in value by 5.8%, whereas the rest of the UK averaged a decline of 1.5%. Uh, and I've been having these conversations for years probably probably with some some of the people uh, on this call with us today um but it's such a resilient market and it comes back to supply and demand metrics because when there are too many people no matter what the economic situation is of the country prices will still go up um through brexit through covid you know people have sat on the on the on the sidelines expecting prices drop and, and they haven't they've just kept increasing and increasing um, we've now got a, a very positive outlook. Um, JLL have projected 19.3%, so just shy of 20% uh, over the next, well, between 23 and 24. So we're, we're looking at an average growth price of just under 5% a year. So if we kind of put a practical example into place here, uh, so if we look at a property of 250,000 and we're going to use 4.8% a year, if we were to purchase that today, and using those growth figures, the property value in three years will be at 286. Now, if you're buying with a mortgage, you're not paying that full cash amount of 250, you're, you're putting down 25%. In some cases, we can lend up to 75%. So your deposit is 62,500. But if you were to sell in three years or to refinance in three years, you've got 36,000 pounds profit there or a 58% return on your investment. Now, obviously there are other factors that go into that, but if we're purely looking at the deposit there, it's a really, really attractive return on investment. Uh, and this is how we have investors who are building portfolios by putting down deposits, re refinancing, reinvesting. Now, obviously, to add to the house price growth, uh, Connor's just touched on uh, the rental growth is also a very... Uh, important and interesting um, side of the investment, especially in Manchester. Um, and in 2023, Manchester achieved the highest level of rental growth across the big six cities at 19.6%, um, as well as obviously the, 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 the highest sales value that Connors just touched on at 4.9%. Uh, 
Um, now, this increase was the highest in any city in the UK outside of London. Um, and obviously, you can see, as compared, the next best was uh, Edinburgh at 18%. And uh, in England, it would have been Birmingham at 179 Now, this average annual rental growth was actually the highest of three bed properties. And they outperformed one and two beds at 33%, which is the largest increase across any of the big six cities, which is very interesting um, for many of us, uh, because this pretty much shows you that apart from the demand from the students uh, who are staying in the city uh, that we touched on earlier, there is also a high demand from families who are migrating from various cities across the UK who are moving into Manchester and uh, settling down there with their family. So there is also a high demand for, for, these, uh, for this market, as well as the students who are staying in the city in, in larger numbers uh, than before, and obviously looking for employment and also uh, professionals at the opposite end of their careers with their families are also moving um, into Manchester for the various reasons we've, we've touched on. So I actually found that this statistic was uh, very interesting in terms of the three beds actually outperforming the one and the two beds uh, due to more families uh, settling down in the city as well. Um, again, I, I've just clipped a few news clippings here. And again, you, you do your research. There are, there are many, many more you can find. But to just to kind of show that we're not just making these stats. So they're all coming from, from kind of hard, hard evidence and hard facts. Now, I've got a small segment here of just some of the properties at the higher end of the rental market, but conversations that I have frequently with investors, when we're specifically discussing Manchester, people don't believe that the rents that are being achieved, and look, they're not quite Mayfair Zone or London, but they're really starting to push that way. So, so these are one beds in Manchester now. So we have 1,700, 2,000, 1,700, 1,825. Here they are taken from right move, left agreed at 1700. Um, again, we're what whilst we are looking at kind of the, the top end of the market there, it sets a new level and a new standard. So this is becoming the norm now. Whereas if we had this conversation five years ago, certainly 10 years ago, it, they would seem eye watering, but they just become the, the new norm. So everything is increasing. Uh, we look at two bedrooms, again, well over £2,000 a month, and people aren't blinking twice at it. Uh, there's a real scrap and a real struggle for property. Um, so I think it's when we're looking at you know projections and rental projections, we're running our numbers as an investor or as a consultant helping investors. Yes, we want to be conservative, but it's also nice to know that, okay, well, actually there is substance in this and these numbers they're not super far-fetched because they're already being achieved uh, and again we, we see here that they're going out of these prices and everything's getting let in manchester it's very very hard to, to rent a property um regeneration and look we could talk about regeneration in manchester for, for hours and hours there is just so much going on kind of a key stat here 10.2 billion pounds is being invested into the city um, but it's the term that the Northern powerhouse, which you, you may or, or may not be familiar with, but it's basically the government have tried to incentivize the focus away from London. So the cities like your Manchester's, Birmingham's and Leeds, et cetera. But Manchester's really, really spearheading this. And it is becoming such a exciting, vibrant place to, to live. And certainly but one of those where if you don't, do it sooner rather than later. You look back and you you maybe you know not not lose too much sleep over it, but you go, oh, I should have I should have done that. I should have done that. And I'm having these conversations with people already. Probably some of you on the call who I spoke to five years ago, uh, who did who didn't buy from us. Um, but I, I think the key point is it's not too late because it is really moving on to the next level. Uh, and sorry, I see some people are joining the call a little bit late. Um, but don't worry, we've got it all recorded. We'll get this all sent out to you. Um, so you, you maybe missed a, a little bit of it, but yeah, not not to worry. We'll get this across to you. Um, but I think sorry to trail off there, but when, when we're trying to identify specific locations within a city, and this is not keep, this is not exclusive to Manchester, but. You, you have two routes to go normally. What One is that you look at the super prime location where you pay a premium. 
But we can also look at areas that have these huge regeneration projects where we foresee the values to increase over you know, medium to long term. So if you have a five to 10 year investment horizon, like a lot of people tend to do, we can identify specific locations. Um, so uh, again, here's a few kind of new, new snaps. And uh, I think the more you research about Manchester, the more it starts to make sense and everything that all the news is positive uh, about property. There, there is just so much happening. Um, I'm just going to highlight a couple of specific um, examples of regeneration projects and the key ones in the city. Um, so the Media City, this is where the BBC and ITV are headquartered. There's currently 7,000 people employed there, but the developer, the Peel Group, are one of the biggest in the UK, um, they're building a second phase, which is going to see it double in size uh, over 10 years. Um, this is where a lot of the tech startups are, et cetera. Um, again, just, just some kind of imagery of CGIs and current undergoing works. Um, and the city centre sits just here. And we've got uh, Pomona Island, uh, which is, as Connor has mentioned, is one of the uh, many regeneration master plan happening uh, across Manchester. Uh, this one happens to be across the river from one of our developments, uh, Barclay Square. Um, now, Pomona Island regeneration is being headed by uh, the Peel Group, who, as Connor has mentioned, um, were responsible for uh, developing Media City as well as Media City Phase 2. Um, it is a £1 billion 10-year master plan. Um, so they are adding 1 million square feet of new office space uh, on Pomona Island. It will be a collection of 14 buildings set among six acres and uh, 26 acres of undeveloped land that's currently there. It's been in Manchester for a while and, you know, Peel Group have decided to obviously spend a billion pounds, re redevelop the area and uh, make it a new hub uh, in Manchester, obviously plugging the gap between the city centre, which is to the right, and Media City, which is uh, to the left. So in the grand scheme of things, that is the plan. Um, obviously, as the city is expanding outwards and growing outwards, um, to ultimately plug that gap uh, between the city centre and Media City. And obviously, Barclay Square, which is highlighted here in blue, um, just across the river from Barclay, from Pomona Island, uh, which is highlighted in red here. Um, it's in a very prime location and uh, it will obviously um, benefit from all the, the growth in that area uh, that will come with that uh, regeneration. Uh, we've got some images here of uh, what the uh, Pomona Island will... I, I, I think we're going to be looking at, John, probably a, a, a mini Canary Wharf. And I think that there's a... That there's a corridor of river here that runs from the city centre up to Media City. And the idea is that it, it's a connection between the two. Um, and again, we, we didn't want tonight to be kind of a, a product push or, or whatnot. But of course, if there's a huge regeneration going on right next to one of our developments, we're, we're going to highlight it. Um, but but look, I think let's this brings us nicely on to kind of which neighbourhood, where to invest. And we, we have a, a minimalistic map of manchester here now but for those of you who don't know the city that well it's not a huge city center so you have the the city center is encapsulated by a ring road which is kind of going around here if you can kind of follow my cursor and from one side to the other it's going to be 45 50 minutes to, to walk across the two so it's nothing like being in a london or, or a new york but within this, you do have pockets and neighbourhoods that have their own identity. So, for example, um, around Deansgate, you have Spinning Fields, which is the main CBD, where you have all the banks, the law firms, the, the fancy bars and restaurants. You have Ancoats and the Northern Quarter, which are a bit more um, hipster or more like Shoreditch, if you know London well. So everyone's got a big beard and their jeans are too tight. Uh, and then various other new areas and cbds and locations popping up and kind of tied back into my point earlier about the population growing so aggressively we're also tied into a lack of available plots for developers building residential because people are scrambling now to, to build commercial with residential we also have increases in build costs we have 
increases in work um, as well. Um, and with that, the, the point kind of I'm trying to get round to is that the numbers are making less and less sense for developers to build residential here. Um, they have changed planning permissions now, so you have to build apartments larger. There's a minimum size one bed and two bedroom uh, to, to adhere to. So a developer or a builder will, will look at a site and go, well, the, the land costs more. Um, the, the materials are going to cost me more. I can build less apartments. We, we have two options here, right? Either we build super prime, high end with high spec, or where we don't build and we move out into the next area. Um, we have also too many people who are struggling to buy properties uh, or, or rent properties in this in these areas, or they can't afford it, or they're not willing to pay the price because it's so much higher than it was five years ago. So the, what I kind of foresee is that we have a formation of zones. So anything inside the ring road here, if we're comparing it to London, becomes your zone one. We then have let's say a mile, two miles out around the city, uh, a zone two. Um, and as what happened in London 10 years or so or, or more ago, these areas then start to get more expensive and cafes open, bars open, restaurants open. Uh, there are artisan coffee shops, et cetera. And then people have to move out again and again. So as long as we keep looking at a population that's growing and a small city, it, it, its only option is to grow outwards. And we see more offices, we see more people, more job creation, more students in the city. So uh, I think if we kind of consider those key factors, whether you to buy from Alliance in Manchester or buy with somebody else. I think it, it is a, a very, very safe bet. And it, it's a market for sure that, that you don't want to move on, you don't want to miss out on and moving on. Um, so, so look, I think we, we've probably taken uh, enough of your time now. Um, so look, thanks for joining us. Um, we are more than welcome to kind of tackle any questions um, via email um, or give us a call or if you'd like to um, schedule in a one-on-one -on -one Teams meeting or discuss anything that, that we have available for you to purchase, more than happy to do so. Um, otherwise, uh, again, great, great to see you and have a wonderful evening. All the best.